Einstein's Relativity 12 Ether Reconsidered 21st century scientists tend to avoid association with Lorenz's ether theory that was gasping for breath at the beginning of the 20th century. Michelson's experiment failed to detect Lorenz's ether. This is the moment when Einstein steps in. He cleverly asserts that we should just forget about the ether because we can't detect it. In a double clever move, Einstein adopts the mathematical contraction that Lorentz developed to rescue his ether theory, even as Einstein was dismissing the theory. Lorenz was the preeminent scientist of his time. In 1912, this issue was still on tenderhooks when Paul Ehrenfest assumed Lorenz's position at the University of Leiden in Holland. His inaugural lecture was entitled About the Crisis in the Light Ether Hypothesis. Crisis? Crisis has to do with impending collapse of the human condition. Science is about knowing existence as it is and using it. But Ehrenfest saw uncertainty in Lorenz's theory as a crisis. Separating the Lorenz ether theory from the Lorenz contraction eliminates the contradiction in the theory. I don't see a crisis in not detecting the ether. I have more vested in presenting an intuitive idea where light speed is relative. The following observations are evident to me and I hope to you, the listener. I will tongue-in-cheek call this Lavaggi's ether theory. If we are going to advance a theory what is the virtue of choosing an esoteric principle? A principle should be easily recognizable to all. The obvious should be stated. Light from each star propagates great distances for millennia to us from all points in the cosmos. Light is the result of hot or agitated energy matter. Local energy matter here in our region imitates the energy matter of the sender, diminished by the distance between the sender and the receiver. This common sense principle does not assert an explanation for the mechanics of electromagnetic and light propagation because we do not sense the propagation mechanics. Knowing the mechanics of photoelectric propagation will ever be hypothetical because our sensors do not perceive this propagation, only its effect on matter. We don't need to know this propagation mechanic to grow and cook food, warm a house, heat and evaporate water, or power a photovoltaic cell. Speculating on the mechanics of propagation is fascinating, but we should not forget that we are speculating. In my hypothesis, we are not seeing the moon. We are seeing the light caused by the moon tickling our retina. Our mind generates a facsimile of the moon including differentiation in intensity and color. I remind myself again that I don't have to get this hypothesis right or prove it, because it exists as an unsubstantiated idea. All that matters is that it is imaginable. As I look out across my field of weeds to the trees, mountains, clouds, and sky in the distance, the entire dome of my imagination is occupied by specific intensity and color of light. This mental facsimile is informed by infinite propagation of phenomena coming to me from all directions. Wherever I stand in this volume of space that I am looking at, and in any direction that I look, 
infinite propagation phenomena flood the dome of my mind. The propagation that passes me instead of hitting my retina continues on and dissipates as it spreads perpendicular to the direction of its propagation. The Lorentz ether theory is good for visualizing a description of light propagation as long as we don't expect to prove it. I suppose this ether is ubiquitous throughout the cosmos. I suppose it is no more detectable than radio signals and behaves the same way. Propagation through the ether is a result of the nature and temperature of the source of the light. This ether exerts no control on the speed or direction of various propagations that transmit through its volume. There is no cohesive consistency to this ether. It does not exert force on energy matter. This ether bears no common traits or similarities to an energy matter wave medium such as water that is often cited as analogy for explaining waves. Direction of propagation through this ether does not change unless it encounters matter or the gas atmosphere associated with matter. This ether is comprised of electromagnetic propagation in all directions relative to each other. A star emits light into the ether in all directions at the speed of light c relative to itself. Earth sensors moving through this ether will detect a blue shift while approaching and a red shift while separating relative to the star. Since we do not detect the mechanics of this ether, my hypothesis cannot be observed. The Lavaggi ether theory is consistent with Maxwell's reference to Romer's experiment. It is consistent with the Michelson-Morley experiment, Doppler shift, and my interpretation of observations of binary stars. At the same time, it releases us from the need to use the artificial Lorentz contraction, which only applies when observers are moving away from a light source. The ether theory also untangles space and time from light speed. Surely the ether is in space and electromagnetic light propagation continually exists in space. All the phenomena therein are the elements of the ether. Space and time are psychological and mathematical components that we must not obligate to energy, matter, and definitely not to a hypothetical ether. Music